some thoughts once you started going through your own experiences with the running store where it was supination, pronation, and stabilization. Yep. And your experience is what you shared with me is that that oftentimes did not fit the bill with what you actually saw in front of you. So I guess you did a couple things with your shoes, but what was the order? And let me just front this by saying the three things that I know and they're right on the, the inside of the box that, that are the most unique is that the ultra shoes have a wider toe box for all the bunions and hammer toes and aromas that we see that allow that, that foot to splay out more. He earths it to the ground more like a, um, an earth shoe and that many times the heel lift with the traditional shoes ends up being problematic and I'll let him expand on that. And then the other thing that is uh, unique about the shoes is that they, I think have a very good uh, mid, midpoint stability that almost allows like a roll if you have, whether it be shin splints or whether it be uh, a problem in, in the arch itself, it lends itself to many of the models have a lot of features that allow kind of a nice forward progression roll. So what I would be kind of curious is how did you come to sort of these precepts and which ones were the ones that you noticed first that you said that might be something I want to change in a, in a shoe. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, that was about as much of an ad advertisement as y'all are going to get right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I think, you know, ultimately this all comes back to my father who was, uh, you know, was drafted to play pro baseball by the angels uh, was, was playing college football, blew his knee out, unha unhappy triad. You probably all know what that is. So just no cartilage left, uh, no meniscus in his knee, um, obviously no stabilization either uh, with the ligaments out. And, um, you know, so what happened to him actually is he got dared along with his, his, uh, buddy to run a marathon. And this is a guy who's basically been good at anything he'd ever done. And all of a sudden, you know, he has to run a marathon with, with no cartilage in his knee and he's never run long in his life. He's never really run. Uh, and, and he, he's also been told by the doctors, you're never going to walk normal again. You're going to always walk with a limp, which has been true to this day. Um, and you're never going to run. Uh, you will never run again. And, uh, you know, but this is the type of person that jumped off, you know, 90 foot cliffs into six feet of water or 80 foot cliffs into three feet of water or hundred plus foot cliffs, just to make a point of like, whatever, I can do this, uh, you know, set records in the bench press, uh, you know, in the state and, and stuff like that. So, uh, for him, you know, this, this was a serious challenge and, uh, he went out and tried to do it and it was, it was just disastrous for him. Um, and so, um, what eventually happened is, is he kept trying it over and over and it was just a miserable failure. And he ended up, uh, eventually seeing a group of African elite African runners run it. And it, it was like this like moment of like, Oh my gosh, we all crash down the road. Those guys float. If I could teach myself now, it, it's kind of funny because he's like five, nine, 240 pounds of solid muscle, you know, but he's like, if I could teach myself to run like those guys who are like, you know, 110 pound lungs on legs. Um, but you know, the, the point was there and, and he did just that and fast forward seven years, you know, he drops 110 pounds. Uh, he wins the St. George marathon. I was two years old at the time runs two hours and 22 minutes. Uh, and you know, he's doing it still on a knee that is, you know, deemed worthless by the medical community. Uh, he's still bone on bone, still uh, no cartilage there. And he attributes it all to teaching himself how to run like a Kenyan. Um, and so there's some basic principles of biomechanics that he used to protect his knee while running. And it's, it's frankly the exact opposite of everything that the running world has been doing for the last 50 years or so, um, which is really unfortunate. And you see this just drastic shift between the way elites run and the way the rest of us run. Um, and luckily for me, I grew up in that environment of my dad, like, you know, down my neck, like run like a Kenyan, you know, so much that, you know, I, I was called Kenyan golden Harper uh, growing up. And um, so this whole idea of, you know, the, the technique of being able to protect your knees and make it more enjoyable to be out there. Because frankly, uh, to be honest with you guys, as, as I, as a coach, watch people run, most people, the vast majority of everybody I see, they're fighting themselves when they run. 
uh, they are not running the way they would naturally run. 